folks, how's it going? Rimash here, and welcome back to episode of Cards and Castles 2 Hitting Combos, where we're jumping into another deck list, one that utilizes another... Ver it, it's another Amplify combo, and I know we showed Gravisaurs off last time. That one was partially utilizing the Amplify as well, uh, but this combo is definitely more focused on the Amplify rather than the uh, other interactions that were going on in that deck here. And as a special treat for you guys, we actually have two variations of this deck list that I kind of wanted to bring to you guys. Because I have been experimenting at least recently with it. I plan to do this deck much later, but after some recent testing with it, I kind of developed this new version that I kind of wanted to put out there at the same time to kind of get a bit of a feel for it. So it, it's going to be a bit of a experimental hidden combos video, but we're going to roll with it. We're, we're going to try and do what we can here. We've got two games, I believe, for each of those different decks. But let's go ahead and show you guys what we're working with for the decks themselves. Let's go ahead and take a look at Bear Brigade. All right, folks, and here is our first of two lists for Bear Brigade. Now, if you haven't already figured out, this combo, of course, utilizes Amplify in combination with the spell known as Bear Patrol. Uh, if you haven't read Bear Patrol before, it's a card for seven gold, seven mana. You summon an Owl Bear as well as two additional Northwood Bears. Uh, the Owl Bear being a uh, Chunky Boy, Chunky Boy, Chunky Boy, uh, with this little Purge ability for one gold, which is very beneficial when facing down things like Viking Buffs or Elsevar. And then, of course, you get the two Northwood Bears as well, which are also just Chunky stat monsters so that is the idea and what happens with amplify when you say amplify a bear patrol because remember this is a rune that can be played in combination with amplify here you actually generate a level 16 owl bear as well as four northwood bears it's a lot of beef on the board at once and is normally enough to overpower for game here especially if you just kind of walk everything in at once come on with what else you whatever whatever else you have going on in the field uh that is what will take you to victory and we have a lot of ways to kind of ensure that bear patrol amplify happens uh as you can see a lot of different elements going on in this deck but i will say when i first made this deck I kind of wanted to go all in on the bear theme, and that's kind of why you're seeing cards like Bear Hog, like Lumberjack and Bear, like Owl Bear in the slot as well. Generally, just a lot of in archetype or in theme bear synergy here. I think the only bear we might have left out is the Panda. And unfortunately, I'm playing Warlock Druid, so Panda kind of locked behind that faction wall that we can't uh, breach unless we have pirates, which. We're not running pirates here, so uh, ultimately we are left with this, which I do think, and uh, it has been a pretty effective deck. Now, I say that with a pinch of salt because uh, lately this deck has not been really doing as well as it initially did. And I do think that's because uh, Bear Patrol can get very easily outpaced. Um, it is, as you can see, a card that takes time to establish, and when you want to set it up with a card like Amplify, you have to be very patient with it to ultimately achieve the end goal of, you know, lots of bears. Uh, we're not really super confident in getting uh, our bears out recently, uh, because I found that a lot of decks people are bringing up front to the table are a bit faster than Bear Patrol. People can establish their win cons, their big plays faster than we can get bear patrol out and ultimately that is what is hurting us because if we can't get the bear patrol down we obviously get kind of just overwhelmed by whatever the opponent is doing here I and mean, we really don't have the best of units here to stop it either uh, our early game here things like oh can get us mana acolyte is all right but bear hog certainly not going to do as much work uh, lumberjack and bear same deal uh, not a unit that will stick around as long as some other things will uh, our late end here can kind of hold out longer. Pyromancer, just a great card here. Northwood Bear for beef, Owl Bear for beef. And that, again, that one gold ability here can be super useful in neutralizing bigger stat targets. And of course, for the legendaries, we also have Amirian and Elsevar. Elsevar for additional mana generation. Amirian just to kind of give us another good unit. I think Amirian, probably one of the better generic druid cards here. Uh, alongside Elsevar. The other two, Fairy Queen and Liana, not bad, but I do think they need that a little extra flair to really get going. But uh, yeah, we went with El it, it was an easy choice. Elsevar and Mirian for the deck. Simple as that. And of course, to generate the mana, 
we have our mana well. Uh, this card, I think, has been pretty crucial to the deck. When you play mana well, or at least when you should be playing mana well, there's a great opportunity around the three gold mark. Uh, that's when you can kind of squeeze between three to four mana from your opponent. And I think having that additional mana helps allow us to facilitate not only the bear patrol, but allow us to take those extra plays uh, like Northwood Bear, like the Emirian, if we have to. Because this deck is using a lot of mana, as you can see here. Total of 46 spread out throughout the deck. And that's not including abilities too, like Pyromancer here, which do require an additional two mana. Uh, but thankfully, we have some other ways to kind of help us alleviate the uh, stress of mana. Power Surge is a card that is pretty funny. Uh, not only is it a damage dealer, but your next card costs two less mana. Very efficient when bringing out things like Northwood Bear on turn four, whether you want to conserve the mana or not, uh, up to you. But if you play the Power Surge beforehand, if you follow up the Northwood Bear, it's a free four gold unit here. Fantastic stuff indeed. Uh, but I mean, overall, I think this has been a fun deck to play. We are going to show you here just in a minute. Actually, I think we're going to start with the other one first in terms of gameplay. Well, we're going to go into both decks first and then get into the gameplays. But anyway, I'm going to take you through some of the cards that we didn't go over already. Uh, Fortify is our sort of just castle healer, keep us alive card. The heal is nice, but the armor and draw is just super critical. Oak for more mana gain. I think Acolyte we went over already, but Acolyte kind of also another bear hog summoner. Also just a great two drop. Uh, Witch's Hut as our Ritual Searcher. This will automatically find us the Bear Patrol if we need it in a pinch. Two of those because we don't want to brick on tools here. We kind of want to open up some more unit spaces. So Witch Hut is at two. Spell Trap, if we have it in hand and want the runes to resolve, this is great. I'm thinking about maybe cutting this though. This might become Split Magic. Split Magic can also interact with your opponent's runes here. And I feel like that is more important. Plus, it is a save on mana. So you might consider Split Magic over Spell Trap for... We're doing a little more actually than what spell chat might be doing in the deck here uh lumberjack on theme with everything else like i mentioned with the bear before and then everything else kind of mentioned over here already power mancher just a great card north of bear owl bear bear patrol all bears but also pretty beefy in their own right at least the units are individually but that is of course the original incarnation of bear brigade let's go ahead and take you over now to deck number two to give you some details on that all right so <laughs> Here is ink, uh, iteration number two, or at least the same combo of Bear Patrol Amplify, but in a different package. Uh, I recently, like I mentioned before, um, with Bear Brigade as a combo that takes a while to get set up here, I found that I was losing games to just faster paced decks here. Decks that could get, again, their tools out faster than I could find uh, and set up my combo. To alleviate that, we kind of inserted the storm package into our um, into our combo here, or at least we've kind of put the storm package in and hoped it would work out. I think what gives storm a great advantage here is the fact that I can just utilize my storm units early on. Uh, you want to use for stall here. You kind of control the board here with manfish, land shark, voyager. All these guys under the proper storm conditions uh, can be pretty beefy, hard to remove, uh, rather than things like Acolyte and Bear Hog that we saw in the previous deck. So these stick around longer, provide that control in order for us to get to uh, Bear Patrol, set that up with Amplify, and then off the races we go. But you also notice we have a lot of ways that we're trying to search for it, as well as ramp into Bear Patrol. Trading Post and Bank are two cards that are giving us extra gold, uh, or at least setting us up for extra gold to uh, go into an early Bear Patrol because we can generate the mana faster than we can maybe generate gold. Uh, we have Mugging we, for additional ramp. We've also got the package of Decompose and Honor the Fallen in here. I've seen this utilized elsewhere, and I really kind of want to try it in this deck specifically. Uh, I feel like we could definitely uh, entomb something like the Skeletons from Cursed Vessel in order to generate the Tombstones for us to decompose. And decompose, a hell of a card here. Not only do we get uh, two mana, but it's also a draw too, which helps us dig deeper into the deck to find things like Bear Patrol or Amplify or whatever other combo piece we need. And of course... 
uh running at the list we do have um not only cursed vessel itself but elvish bandit for steel kind of taking opponents resources trying to use whatever they have against them for the legends we've got two maddie two maddie must have because you are contrabanding in the amplify for the combo to work um he kind of needs to be here to allow amplify to fit in and i've also we got the Vileroth uh at two copies uh Vileroth is sort of the secondary backup to this deck um in case you don't get the bear patrol or at least you find this or if you find this first uh, Villaroth is just an incredible body that is very difficult for people to remove uh, outside of like the person who's playing Soul Destroy, which there are a few of you out there. I've heard the rumors. There are a few of you out there using Soul Destroy. But regardless, Villaroth, a big chonky body that if you just march to the castle, you could also potentially win off of that as well. Everything else is the same though. Uh, Fortify, Oak, uh, Witch's Hut at two copies. Bear Patrol at two copies here because they are a little bricky. We don't want to draw into them hard. Uh, you do want to try and get the Witch's Hut first. But in case you do uh, draw into one, it's not the end of the world. Hence why we're going to leave it at two copies for now. Uh, but everything else looking good, looking fantastic. But we do have some games to get to. So let's go ahead and show you this deck our green white version first and then we'll transition into the original the red white so let's go ahead and jump right in to game number one all right and our first match up against beastly here now as you can see we pull a decent opener here with the voyager into manfish we can utilize that a little bit here honor is a nice little pickup for turn one because you can just use it right out the gate uh generate that draw as well as get some potential tombstone set up and curse is an uh, excellent follow-up uh, for turn two because now you could of course get into the storm before voyager to make the man fish more valuable uh beastly's gonna open up with the spiny here spiny uh, okay it, it's a card i think at this point he was trying a lot of different rush variations after doing his cavalry stuff which i'm sure he'll make a video on eventually uh meanwhile going into the hawk here so kind of going into the simple one gold two gold kind of standard uh rush ramp if you will uh we pick up mugging for turn though which i think changes my plans a little bit here we opt to set up trading post for some additional um what you call it for some treasure but we also use the mugging to kind of pop the hawk here now it's important to pop the hawk because we don't have many other flying answers in deck mugging something we kind of have to use to remove this hawk from the board here so it doesn't just sit on our face and chip away at us uh, although he follows up with some nasty pressure here you see the assault tower in the back uh, becoming quite popular in rush decks is this little card right here being able to plant itself in the back of the castle here and just shoot face uh, and it's not exactly fun when that happens uh, so it's a nice little way to kind of keep aggro strategies uh, going as the game progresses uh, so we kind of have to double back try and dealing with this uh, as you can see we've got the skeletal crewman at least one of them trying to intercept the spiny here the others can't make it though they're going to end up going into face as you can see and uh we pass back for our next round round number four he's on the initiative here so he has some potential plays he can make centaur is a play for sure and of course he follows up with the pumpkin another flyer that we kind of have to use mugging on as unfortunate as it is but we will do what we must he avoids the tombstone which is fantastic um he sees no reason to go for it. he is a rush deck after all so he's going face here although a bit of a mistake on my part i opt to trade here uh to generate the tombstones to block off the tower a bit of a rough play in this case but we will hopefully try and recover that uh mugging though on the pump we need to get rid of it before it does anything further like get any buffs or do any sort of moving shenanigans we want to take that off the board here and he's just going to shoot into the uh castle with the assault tower we're going to end up popping the centaur below here and at this point we're kind of doing well to uh move past his rush no other draw engines that he has currently in the matchup so he's still stuck on like three cards we do have fortify which is fantastic decompose though is an even better pickup uh this is going to allow us to pop one of these three tombstones to generate some additional uh advantage and as you can see here he's gonna go for the hawk which is fine spiny as well we do end up going for the decompose play just because i know he's not gonna be able to really stop this uh we pop the tombstone create the value here as you can see we went up to five mana we draw some additional cards which can help us 
stall out the game further. Fortify me while doing work, defending our castle a bit here. And of course, at this point, he is just in a bit of a situation. Uh, skeletal crewmans are chipping away at his face. They have been for pretty much the entire game at this point. Uh, the damage is starting to add up a little bit. He is going to Curse of Terror the Bandit, which is a nice choice there. Protecting his uh, Spiny from an additional steel play, but I'm going to just move in further. Uh, we end up drawing for turn here, uh, but I think this is the point where he does surrender. So I'm not sure what he had in his hand for this, but it seemed like he just wasn't able to stop whatever I was going to throw at him. He did have the initiative though, which is, it, it is curious that he just surrendered at this point here. I don't know if those three cards were just dead, but it is what it is. And you can see on the uh, top corner there, uh, we were at seven and six mana, very close to a bear patrol in this turn. Uh, unfortunately, I think we used that mana to summon the trading post and the voyager here. So that mana kind of getting diluted a bit here, but overall a solid showing. And that's kind of why I think the storm package helps out the deck a bit. It can provide those bodies that i think are just better than what we were running in the first deck um that will of course allow us to just keep the game uh, going have that control over the board i think that was what i was looking for but regardless game number one fantastic show and let's go ahead and take a look though at the second game from this deck all right folks and game number two now underway as derek of course takes a swing at us uh, Derek, I believe at this point, playing his uh, Blue Black Warrior Toolbox. Uh, this is a nasty deck that I think a lot of people have kind of glossed over for now because Vikings uh, aren't doing a whole lot right now. But this deck has some surprise up its sleeve and hopefully we can get to see those in this matchup here. I'm going to open up with Cursed Vessel. He's going to march the smithy down. As you can see, Banshee coming out. He's kind of got that same, uh, you know, one-two punch from the get-go here, which is annoying but not unbeatable here as he passes after uh, going face here we are going to summon those three skeletal crewmen we can also go into the man fish if we want to this turn he is going to call to war here which i'm not sure if it pulls out the scout but he did tutor a warrior into his hand not great so we do have to devote the man fish to the board here a bit of a misplay on that positioning but we will make do with what we can he actually push uh curse of feared my skeletal crewman which is maybe a mistake from his part kind of opens up the blacksmith here the smithy uh that will pop the uh or at least that'll help trigger the manfish backstab get the kill off on smithy and of course our crewmen actually are enough on their own to pop the scout as well so overall we're in a pretty nice spot right here we do draw witch's hut for turn which is fantastic it provides us some uh instant search for bear patrol in the deck uh, but of course that is mullied with cursed vessel i should have mentioned in this deck troll gunner pops out that's why we saved the mugging here we're all going to go ahead and remove that right off the board here as well as gain the additional treasure backstabbing the banshee pushing our units into his face which is just great for us here as you can see he got no response uh so the crewman gonna do a little bit of additional damage here not really bringing things to an even state but we're making our way there and we are going to summon three more crewmen off of that cursed vessel uh, and I draw the Amplify, and I'm immediately sad because uh, we had two great rituals. I could have used that, but not uh, at the same time that that Amplify was in hand. Regardless, we're going to go Bank here. We're going to go Manfish here. We're going to set up Bank at this point to allow us to start ramping a little bit here. Because Bank not only giving us gold, but another outlet and a cheaper outlet for mana purchasing as well. So Bank, of course, going to do some fun stuff in the back here. Meanwhile, Derek on uh, Crowd Control. As you can see, the Banshee looking to uh, take out that uh, first crewman there, but we are going to Banfish Backstab to maintain control of the board. Whenever you have the opportunity, I think this deck loves to just have general control of the board because we remember Bear Patrol is a combo, or at least the Amplify Bear Patrol is a combo that needs us to allow time for it to happen. And if our opponent has tools on the board, they can stop what we're doing and ultimately get to our face and kill us. So whenever we want to control the board, we definitely want to rather than going face. So, of course, Skeletal Crewman going to chip away here continually. Uh, we're going to throw some positions up all around just because we're going to try to move things around the best we can here. I go for the Witch's Hut. This is going to bring us the Bear Patrol in hand. Opting to buy some mana as well, which is going to allow us to get into our Bear Patrol uh, a bit easier. Goes for the Scout and Mastered Arms play on the opposite side, though. We are going to use the remaining three gold to just mana burst. Nothing that we can really do here. I don't really want to fortify anything. And we can't amplify anything as well on this board. So saving the gold isn't really helping us in this fight. Uh, we are going to take some more... Actually, no. Manfish onto the mana tower. 
I think my reasoning was that I didn't want him to bring out bigger mana things, but at that point it would have been too late anyway. I didn't think the Manfish was going to do too well anyway uh, at this point. At least the one level one here. Uh, this guy only already put in enough work as it is, but of course, Derek following up with the Brynjolf for turn. And that would have been normally a scary threat for uh, a different deck, but we've got Veloroth in hand. And of course, Veloroth is going to be the play now. Unfortunately, we missed the opportunity there. If you didn't notice my uh, gold mana cost right there, we were at 8 and 9, which is a great opportunity to commit to a Bear Patrol Amplify because we also are on the crackback. However, I was worried about the Brynjolf doing some dirty things uh, in the matchup, so I went with the Villaroth as the safer play. I figured we could have just, uh, or we could just, easily reset our mana and gold as the game progresses further and further. Uh, so, I skipped ahead here, uh, like an idiot. Uh, <laughs> so, Villaroth comes out, gonna provide a blocker for the Brynjolf, as you can see. Uh, he's gonna try and Curse of Terror, but forgets that uh, dragons don't have, uh, or aren't affected by movement. So things like the fear, the push, the pull, not going to work here on Veloroth. Uh, he was trying to swing into face, but ultimately just not working out the way he wants to. So he is going to double back here to try and go back on cleanup duty, as you can see. Uh, Brynjolf smacking the Manfish as well, which is nice for him because Brynjolf now also gaining some additional attack power off of this. Meanwhile, we're going to try and move Veloroth in the best we can here. He's going to trade off with the remaining crewmen. We're going to use Manfish to kind of just poke into face a little bit more and pass back. Because right now, we're enacting our backup plan. As you can see, we're marching Villaroth over to face here. Attempting to uh, use Villaroth's big fat attack stat to end out our game. And he has to commit quite a bit to it to remove it as well. So, it's not going to be easy for him. We're going to draw Decompose. Unfortunately, a bit of a dead card in our hand in this scenario. Uh, we don't have ways that we can generate tombstones right now, so we are just going to pass on that. He steps another Brynjolf, which is annoying, but not unbeatable here, as you can see. We're going to trigger the Relentless on the first Brynjolf, fortify our Villaroth to protect against the remaining warriors, and just simply Manfish trade with the Relentless Brynjolf on board here. He's going to notice that. He's going to opt to go into a uh just warrior rush kind of ignore me go for face here to see what he can do we're gonna chip away with skeletal crewman in the meanwhile pop the master on for the manfish he's gonna use brynjolf of course uh to be annoying uh popping manfish uh and moving the scout around but we have to pass at this point we're gonna mana burst i believe uh, but here I think is where things get pretty fun. We do have another bear patrol amplify play and at this point I have to commit to it. There's no other play I can really make here. Oak is playable alongside this so we're going to play that as well as the bear patrol amplify. So next turn on the crackback we're going to generate a lot of bears. He notices this though and it's uh, kind of worried here. I go for the Villaroth Scout trade here, which is actually a much better play than I realized at the time. And you'll see why in just a moment here. And Krumen, of course, chipping away as well. He's going to move the Brynjolf and start a Thirst for Battle, which will uh, immediately go into another combat phase. Uh, this, of course, is going to reset things like Master at Arms, Brynjolf, they can get another movement, and more importantly, another attack. And of course, the initiative is maintained here, so Derek would open up on that initiative, and he would be able to kind of just swing in and do some big damage. Now, thankfully, though, we did not interact with the Brynjolf enough to give him his attack stat, uh, his attack stat boost off of being damaged. Uh, Brynjolf, if you're not aware, has this, like, reverse fatigue effect, where if you hit it, it'll become stronger and hit you back 10 times harder. I mean, not 10 times harder, but you know what I mean? It can hit pretty hard if you damage it or try to kill it in any way, which we had the option to with Veloroth, but we chose to prioritize Veloroth and force it more on our opponent's face here, meaning that Derek needs to make a decision here. Does he want to double back with the Brynjolf, or does he want to full commit to try and kill me this turn? As you can see, he's going to, of course, get into another, another combat phase. Master at Arms to move up, Brynjolf to connect, and unfortunately not enough, I think, even with the Berserker to make game. So, Villaroth walks in and seals the deal. Oh, fantastic stuff right there. And that is probably the prime example of why Villaroth is a great backup for your strategy, because on his own, he can just win games outright. And it's also important to note that in this matchup, we did see the Bear Patrol Amplify get played. Uh, it was playable in this uh, certain matchup here, and I assume... The, if you commit to more matches, you could probably see the same result here. Although with things like decompose rotting in your hand, potentially, 
I understand that there might be swaps that you want to make here. But overall, that was the green white list, the most recent version, the one that we're still probably making updates on to this day. Let's go ahead and go back though and check out that other deck, the red white original incarnation. All right, folks, so jumping over into the original incarnation, the red white, if you will. Uh, we're going to open up here with quite a nice hand. We can go Bear Hog into Witch's Hut turn two if we need to into Northwood Bear the following turn. And Amplify already in hand is a nice way to generate our combo. So we're going to start off with Mind Lord's turn here. He is going to opt for a School of Knowledge here. Uh, he is, I think, playing Rats at this point. This is one of the earlier Rat builds I think he played. Uh, but he's in a School of Knowledge for draw. Uh, we are going to end up going Bear Hog in response. Bear Hog going to be a nice little way to get some additional chip uh, in the opener here. As you can see, it takes nine. Not bad, not the worst. And of course, uh, turn two, we have a decision to make. I have to Acolyte here because I figured Witch's Hut we could do uh, the turn before Bear Patrol. So we can save it for now, kind of establish more bodies at the start. He summons Fat Bar, which is annoying. Uh, we're going to try and kill it here, uh, throwing it back to him. He's going to try and pop my Acolyte a bit more here, which I think is fine. We have enough gold left over, though, so we are going to pop a Bear Hog summon. Bear Hog, of course, connecting and overpowering the Fat Bard. Again, maintaining board control, which I think I, both decks want to do. And we generate Mana Well for turn. Generate? Draw. We draw Mana Well for turn, which is cool. Uh, I go for the Witch's Hut play here into the Mana Well. Opting not to Pyromancer here because we don't have initiative uh, to make pyromancer more valuable the thing about pyromancer is that when you do play him you always want to play him on your initiative so that way you have maximum value or maximum control over what you can pyro burst um and we do have this great little you know cluster here for pyromancer but if we played it this turn he would have been on the initiative he would have moved things around uh and tried to stop our pyromancer from getting the best value that it could so anyway we're going back here. We did play the mana well for this turn. Uh, as you can see, it's going to generate us quite a bit of mana here. Uh, he's going to try and shoot things, uh, as you can see, moving the wolf around, doing the overpower, which is fine here. Uh, unfortunately, we have to end combat because he used up all of his actions. I was hoping he would have gone for maybe a school draw after the units moved, so we would have gotten another action off of it. But he kind of knew what we were going for, so kind of shut us down at the six mana mark. I still think it's fine, though, because again, all that extra mana is good because it just goes right into the bear patrol fund uh for this turn though we are going to play the power mancer here we're going to use two of the mana that we have stored up and we are going to try and get a burst here he summons the rat king kind of gives our power mancer a bit more value than i think he would have liked to see uh power mancer shoots up we're gonna deal a huge explosion uh, unfortunately we cannot kill the rat king in this position so we're going to try and weaken it the best that we can uh, i think he does unfortunately get the overpower meaning we do lose the bear hog he will hunt or shoot my pyro and i think at that point pass the turn back we're not in a bad position though uh at all we do have bear patrol still on the way here meanwhile he's going to go for a couple of vermin tunnels as you can see uh generating some more rats for him kind of forcing me to maybe play out more of my power mancer to try and get a big explosion off here but he also going to try and get rid of the pyromancer to the best visibilities here hunter going to take a shot that's fine rat's going to go ahead and do things as well which if you're not sure why he's getting more actions sushi shack allows him to have an additional action per combat phase so while i get two he gets three with the addition of the shack so uh, able to do a bit more on his turns uh, meanwhile, we're going to go ahead, scoot back a little bit here, shoot another Pyroblast. Uh, meanwhile, hitting that rat over here, uh, the one next to the castle, because that could have easily killed off our Pyromancer. This is going to force him to accept another Pyromancer turn for us, because we're going to have the initiative again, as well as some mana to potentially drop another Pyro Explosion here. But we are getting low. We do have to be conscious of that, because we do want Bear Patrol Amplified to resolve. For turn, though, a great pickup in Mana Well Part 2. This is going to get us into our Lumberjack play as well. Lumberjack uh, Part 2, providing us another decent body. He's going to Elsevar into another School of Knowledge, which is fine here. I'm going to quickly just pop this bottom rat. So, of course, Elsevar is going to do his thing, but another turn that Pyromancer can kind of kind of live. He's going to be forced to move Elsevar up to chase the Pyromancer. Going to shoot the Lumberjack with the Hunter, which is fine. Taking shots, they are a little... Uh, party here we're going to use our new lumberjack though to chip away at that uh, hunter with the flank and of course pass it back to him gaining in the process eight gold and 10 mana for uh turn eight and that is 
fantastic because not only do is that just a lot of mana but it allows for bear patrol amplified to be a combo this turn because we'll be on the initiative in the next so we have to really just stall out the turn here hope he doesn't kill us through any means uh he does play hidden in the walls which is quite an amount of rats here but of course we are going to end up bear patrolling and amplifying so this is going to generate us that level 16 owl bear as well as four northwood bears he's going to finally get rid of the power mancer that's been bugging him all game uh elsevar going to go ahead and chip away at the lumberjack but realistically not i think enough to kill outright and of course we're going to double back here as you can see going to do a bit more uh to just damage the castle it's going to take away the hunter and take away the rat we're taking away the rats by the way because wear rat giving curse of the moon uh to hand making more wear rats out of the, any other rat on the board is something that we don't want to deal with so we're trying to clean up the rats here as best we can plus we have the combo of bear patrol amplify on board now um we're not worried about damage these guys are going to hit hard so we can afford to just do a bit more cleanup than we would normally do here uh, again maintain the board control if you will uh, meanwhile, his wrath is going to do some things here. Both Lumberjacks fall. And there it is, the Bear Patrol Amplify combo in action. Unfortunately, we didn't spell trap it, but that is fine here. Getting the combo off, nonetheless, is still very devastating for your opponents to look at here. Uh, meanwhile, keeping enough gold to potentially do a Frenzy as well with the Owlbear. Uh, we're going to kind of move some things around, though, as you can see. I believe we're going to just kill off the Wear Rat, give him the Curse of Moon, which is fine. Uh, he can't use it this turn because it does cost four gold and he's got unfortunately zero meanwhile he's going to use the new wear rat to overpower the weaker of uh, the northwood bears i do recognize that i figured okay that's not great here but we're going to go ahead and take some additional damage and move in to do some stuff amirian gets killed off here uh else are going to do some things but there's the purge ability kicking in as you just saw there uh, we purge the Elsevar, bring it down from, I believe, something like level 13. Yeah, level 13 to his original stats of level 7. Uh, quite a devastating move there for, again, decks that utilize that, you know, buff strategy here, creating that big unit, uh, like in Vikings or in this case, Elsevar. Uh, meanwhile, he's going to do his turn, though. He's going to try and get rid of the Owlbear because Owlbear is the biggest threat to his board at the moment. Uh, and of course, he's gonna put all of his rats in to try and regain a bit of that Elsevar boost, which he has not uh, used, by the way. Uh, move, yeah, he hasn't moved Elsevar or uh, acted with him. Recognizing this, I kind of just move in my bears at this point. He has to go for the owl bear kill here, but uh, can't kill it, so opts to pop a an, uh, another Northwood bear from us, which is annoying, but it's fine here. We are in the summon phase, so we can do a bit more damage to him this turn. Again. Another purge going to remove all those additional levels from the Elsevar. Uh, Call to the Wild here, I believe, was played. Though they're going to get him a Rat King and another Sushi Shack, which is annoying, but we can deal with it. Oh, excuse me. Uh, we throw down the Lumbering Oak and the an, uh, additional copy of Northwood Bear for turn, just to kind of establish more of that board control. Bears are going to chip in here. Uh, rats are at least trading with the bears, at least. Uh, and of course, he is going to finally kill off the Owlbear, but not before a hefty chunk is removed. Recognizing this, though, I kind of opt for some face damage here where I can. I probably should have moved that second bear, uh, the one that was close to Castle in first. But I kind of wanted to also negate some additional actions if he had any, so that was my reasoning there. Meanwhile, uh, oh, no, you know what? That's why. I think we want to do this. Uh, Amirian shoot the Elsevar, bear overpowers Elsevar, and of course, a pass back after that. I think he still also has rats on the board too, but opts to just not do anything with them. So we'll end combat here. Going to move into, I believe I missed the round number, but we're going to move into the next round here where we follow up with another Northwood Bear um, to kind of just put more beef on the board. He's going to opt to Elsevar again, plus an additional Were Rat, which is quite alarming. Uh, we are going to opt to just try and remove the Were Rat though, if we can. Amiri taking a shot here, Bear going into Castle. We're at taking out the weaker of the four bears. Elsevar coming in as well, doing some stuff. Uh, rat trying to block. Unfortunately, not really going to be enough here. Uh, bear can move through the rat. Rats aren't uh, able to be nice body blockers. We do get the uh, where at overpower as well. Uh, I think we just move the Trent up or the Oak up, excuse me, to just block the bear from Elsevar as well. Again, very down in position here. This is what the Bear Patrol Amplify can do. As I mentioned before, um, damage, not a problem when you have so many bears on the board here. So you are uh, free to take more board control measures if you'd like in the matchups. 
He's going to opt for another Elsevar Amirian of his own, which is fine. We're going to do uh, nearly a repeat play. Uh, just Elsevar, though, so we can generate some more mana at the very least. Uh, he's going to try and Amirian heal his way out of the situation, but I believe it's not going to work the way he wants to. If I remember correctly here. Yeah, he kind of opens up with the rat there. Amirian going to walk in, shoot face. Actually, no. Do I go? Yeah, I go bears here, I think. Bear going to overpower the Elsevar, which is fine. He can not really use Elsa, uh, Amirian all that much here. He can shoot the stronger of the two bears, which is fine. Regardless, they're beefy enough to just move in and seal the deal for the win. Fantastic showing of what the Amplify Bear Patrol combo can do in that matchup. As you saw, a whole lot of bears, a whole lot of beef. Stuff that he couldn't really fight over uh, accordingly here. And more so because his biggest uh, threat, the Elsevar, was pretty much neutered once Owlbear hit the board. So, some great stuff from this deck for sure. But we do have one more game, so let's go ahead, uh, go ahead bleh, and see how that one... Uh, Bears. I can't speak English today, folks. I really can't. All right, folks. And so the final game underway here, at least for the day, it's going to be us taking on Death's Advocate. We, of course, uh, are back on eh, some. We got the Oak in hand. That's going to be our opening play here at the very least. Uh, DA got the yellow black combo here, uh, going for some night digging, Journey of the Desert, our night tutor in this game, uh, which is fine. Oak going to move forward here. This is going to provide a bit of an early threat. Uh, not too big, though. Uh, unfortunately, we don't really have much we can do in this turn, so we're going to let him uh, go ahead and take the combat phase here. As you can see, Priest is going to go ahead and pop into the Trent a little bit here. We can further damage the Priest without killing our Trent, which is fine. We're going to take that. I think it's important to mention that Oak for these decks are very expendable, to be honest. Like They're only there to be the mana generation. They're a fine turn one mini threat, uh, but you do ultimately want them to perish off so that way you can generate that mana to get further into your bear patrol combo. So, of course, uh, drawing into spell trap now, not exactly great for us. We're going to hold on to the, what is going to be our play card here, the power surge. As you can see, we're going to chip in there, get power surge the priest as well. I'm not going after the white knight because I don't think, uh, or at least based on what I saw, we could kill off the White Knight with the Power Surge, and if I had just left him Priest uh, and the White Knight, he would have just healed the White Knight up anyway. So not exactly great for us. We have to use the Power Surge there, but this is going to allow us to go into our very cheap Northwood Bear combo. Unfortunately, he saved up a little bit of gold here, and that is going to allow Blessing of the Meek to happen on the White Knight. Uh, White Knight, of course, not exactly unbeatable, but certainly very big. We're going to opt to stay away from that for now because we don't really have ways of dealing with it with just the bear in hand. Uh, so for turn, we do draw a nice little Elsevar and Oak combo right here, but we go for the Power Mancer instead, just to kind of maybe chip away at White Knight from a distance here. Uh, unfortunately, our opponent is going to opt for Sign of the Cross on his uh, castle here. Kind of not great positioning, though, as you can see. His White Knight having to fall out of the heal. His castle will get healed, but really nothing else will become of that. And of course, we're going to take the opportunity to deal a bit more damage to the White Knight there, as you can see. Burning it a bit here, weakening it uh, without having to maybe interact with it for lifesteal, which is fantastic. Uh, this is going to draw us into Mana Well, though, for our next turn. Mana Well, kind of stinky um, for us, because we want units at this point, not the spells here. But regardless... He's going to D, uh, DCS or Dragon Crest Shield that White Knight there, allowing for a better Elsevar connection here. Uh, I opt to go for just Pyromancer Hit. I want to conserve the mana. And of course, we're going to move the bear away just so we can maybe avoid a White Knight double kill there. So not exactly the best position for us in this matchup, but... We are going to go ahead and persist anyway. Drawing the Witch's Hut for turn is pretty good here. We're going to opt for Mana Well into the Fortify on Bear to kind of keep that around as a threat here. And actually, we can save the gold a little bit here and not go into the Witch's Hut because we drew Bear Patrol off the Fortify, uh, which is nice here. Our opponent does do a bit of a stinky combo here. Uh, Dragon Knight plus White Knight allows not only the White Knight to uh, heal off the Lifesteal, but also gain attack because Dragon Knight allows any sort of... Uh, health gain or health regain excuse me heal 
2, proc, and attack buff. Uh, but overall, as you can see there, we're doing quite fine with the mana well. Mana well generating us a lot of value because we have a playable card in hand, the Witch's Hut, which we're not opting to play here, so forcing the turn to go back and forth here and generating us uh, a lot of mana there. 8 gold, 13 mana is going to be just enough here in terms of the gold department to get us into our Bear Patrol Amplify combo. Playing it outside of the sign of the cross here just because, uh, you know, we could. Uh, although he is unfortunately going to use the opportunity to get rid of the Pyromancer we had on the board. Uh, the Cleric plus the White Knight combo. I'm going to deal uh, well here to just take it off the board. He is going to try and move up here. Deadeye getting a shot in the face. White Knight's moving up and about too, which is fine. But we now pull off the Amplify Bear Patrol, baby. There it is. Uh, again, the four bears plus the really big owl bear. And actually, the Witch's Hut here doing uh, a little bit of extra work here. We do have a second Bear Patrol to go into. Unfortunately, falling short a little bit in the gold department, but uh, still very valuable here. And of course, we're going to use the Owlbear to proc on that uh, White Knight, removing it from uh, the Blessed of the Meek that it had. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to overpower that Sunseal Cleric to provide it from doing any more sort of serious work here. Uh, he's going to go ahead and try to do his best to interact with this uh, Owlbear here. Uh, moving around here. We're going to create a little bit of a wall with Mordok. Uh, we're going to chip in. Just some essential body trading. Nothing too serious at this point here. And I think we also go for... Uh, yeah. We hold out. I probably should have gone for the Witch's Hut in that moment. But I forgot it would have proc more. And it doesn't matter here. We're going to draw yet another Bear Patrol into hand. Which is fine because our, in our next turn... We're going to be able to not only summon uh, or do some more damage, excuse me, with these guys. We'll put another bear patrol down to summon more bears for the following turn here. And of course, you need to try to use this Mordok the best that he can here uh, to try and get rid of our big owl bear. Uh, we're going to throw another bear patrol over there. Following up the Acolyte to try and protect ourselves a little bit here. Trying to divert the damage, but uh, yeah, he'll get into the uh, owl bear. Kind of just perform a bit of a misplay here, opting to shoot first before the Mordok. That's going to turn around the Owlbear to prevent the flank from happening. I think maybe if he had gotten the flank off, he would have lost the Owlbear in that moment, but hard to say. Uh, of course, we are going to overpower the Mordok, taking it off the board here. We are going to also overpower the Dragon Knight to prevent further uh, combos from the healing. Deadeye, meanwhile, going to go ahead and take a step back here. This will allow uh, the rest of his units here to kind of just trade in. But as you can see, a lot of resources put into those plays, uh, unfortunately. Uh, we're going to opt to pop the White Knight here, just to kind of get some control of the board. Uh, at this point, we're looking really, really good. Acolyte going to go ahead, take some damage in from the Flying Books. Bear from the White Knight. We're going to pass back here, which is great. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of damage to Books, which is, I think, all that's on the board here. So we are going to now pop a second Bear Patrol, resulting in a less than... Uh, 16 level owl bear and two more northwood bears and then following up with the Mirian here after a mana burst this is pretty much leaning toward the end of the game here as you can see he's down to about a card or two in hand and even though he's getting a lot of nice stuff on the board we can very easily clear it off as you can see one dead eye gone two dead eye gone not exactly great for him uh we've horror going to see the dragon knight do ahead go ahead chip a little bit here lumberjack getting taken off the board here going to try and protect his uh Backmost dead eye, I believe. We're gonna purge the white knight. Unfortunately, not able to kill it, but we'll overpower it with one of the Northwood bears. I think uh, he'll go into yeah acolyte hit here, which is fine. Uh, dead eye gonna remove the weakest bear from the board. Acolyte gonna step back, pop into books. We're gonna move the bear to attack the castle in the next turn, and yeah, things are looking good. He is on the initiative though. Unfortunately, we don't have a play this turn because uh, spell trap, spell trap, bear patrol with only one mana. Not exactly the best here, but we will, of course, mana burst. If we allow, uh, if he allows us to keep the Acolyte, we go into Bearhog summoning. Uh, as you can see there, he's pretty focused on just removing the big threats. Although, moving in two bears is certainly no joke. Of course, as you can see, a lot of damage taken out right from under him. Still going after the bear, uh, the owl bear, though, excuse me, uh, is, uh, Death's Advocate, allowing us to pop the books with Acolyte, giving him another card here, but a Mirian also stepping up, shooting the face as well. Uh, Owlbear in combination, I believe, with the Northwood Bear up top, going to overpower the Dragon Knight. Throw it back to him. I believe books is the kill on Owlbear. Yep. 
unfortunate. But we've already done the damage here. A lot of bears on face our initiative next turn, and it's pretty much a clear sign of game over. Uh, and that is basically what bear patrol uh, can do. That is the ideal bear brigade position for us to be in. Uh, a lot of bears, a lot of overpowering. Uh, he is going to uh, DCS here, Dragon Crush Shield. Uh, but I don't think that's going to be enough here. Uh, we do shoot the priest. Actually, no. I pass over to him because I want to get some control over the board here. We go into killing the priest. We pop into the dead eye. He's trying to get some heals all around, but really nothing really working. Uh, we're going to bear into face. Acolyte popping the books. I think we move that utmost northward bear into the mana tower. Yep, getting off the board. Uh, moving the oak up one and then passing back. We could have probably gone for a Amirian heal, but I was just conserving mana for another bear patrol. Uh, he does go for the sign of the cross here. Mordok hitting the board. Mordok a little too late. Uh, he will have initiative though, which is important. We're going to try and throw Acolyte out to maybe do the final blow. He's going to remove the uh, weakest Acolyte from the board here. You'll see some more bear interactions, but ultimately the bears are way too big. Amirian plus our healthiest bear moving in to deliver the uh, final blow. And yeah, like I mentioned, that is the ideal bear brigade position. Just having a lot of bears provide overpowering beef. And some of them even being able to take away those buffs, which are very, very important to some strategies. Very happy with how the deck kind of performed, though. As I said, I'm still working on some of the kinks as we progress further into the game. People are developing new decks and new strategies. But overall, I think this is a fun deck and definitely worth it if you want to create a lot of bears. All right, folks, and with that being said, it is going to bring us to a close here. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, longer hidden combos video. Looked at a lot today, looked at a lot of bears. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. Uh, and if you want to use the deck for yourself, I'll leave both deck codes down below in the description if you want to use them. Uh, but yeah, that is going to do it for me for now. So be sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Be sure to share it with your friends. Be sure to comment down below your thoughts on the deck if I didn't say so already. And subscribe if you're new or haven't done so to the channel. It is the best way that you could help support us and help the channel grow all at no cost to you. So with that being said, guys, until next time, stay gaming.